Hey everyone, so if you're wondering, what you're looking at here is a 1 8 inch gap of distilled water between two electrodes. I'm going to show what high voltage electrolysis looks like under a microscope, and while we're watching that I'll discuss uh, what I hope to do later this summer. So, turn on our power supply, and get it going. Now, if you're interested in replicating the setup, um, it is fun to observe. Uh, but there's nothing secret going on here. Basically what you're seeing is the Lorentz force acting on the hydrogen and oxygen bubbles. Um, what I've got is a USB microscope camera for about $20 online. Everything's sitting on a quarter inch thick piece of plate glass. I'm using distilled water in a 1 8 inch gap between the electrodes. The electrodes are 304 stainless steel, 3 16 square rod. They're 2 inches in length. And I have two power supplies one 0 to 30 volt power supply, and that drives the high voltage DC to DC power supply. It's a 0 to 15 volts input and 0 to 4 kilovolts output at 2.5 milliamps. Um, it's an Amco F40. I bought that online for about $45. And on the plate glass, I actually use hot glue to put the electrodes down and to keep the water retained between them. Uh, that way, if I want to change the gap size or try different electrodes, I can just peel it up. But it's fun to watch. I can sweep the distance of the electrodes here. You can see the reaction occurs all the way down. Some areas it's not as dense. And this is not what's occurring in stand cell. I need to stress that. Um, stand cell produces a different effect. Hopefully, later this summer, I will be able to show on this, between these two electrodes, what's occurring in stand cell on a very small scale. Um, I don't want to show massive gas production or anything like that. I uh, just want people to understand what the water is doing between the electrodes and how it's splitting because it's not electrolysis. It's not a basic electrolysis process. It's actually a phenomenon that I don't think Stan himself knew he was going to see. And we, when he turned up the voltage, you know, he, he produced an effect which he had theorized and actually worked. But then as he brought the voltage up even higher, he hit this point. And he describes this in his technical brief and in many other papers. Uh, this has also been something that's been observed in science. I have several scientific papers on it. They've seen it in nature and plasmas in space, and they've seen it in electrolysis cells before. What the scientific community, I think, what they're missing is really the understanding of how profound this is when you bring up the voltage with a restricted current. The problem is they were never able to restrict the current like Stan did. Um, with his VIC circuit he could do he could you know replicate this phenomenon over and over again whereas science has only seen it on a really small scale in the laboratory or on a massive scale in space but they they haven't figured out how to um, increase the size in the laboratory. That is something that Stan did. So hopefully in the summer I'll be able to show it, like I said, on a small scale. In the meantime, we'll turn up the voltage a little bit more on this. About 3800 volts. Right there, that's about as high as I want to go. I can zoom in further, but it kind of zooms in so far that it, it 
defeats the purpose of being able to really see the reaction as a whole. Let's see. There's the electrode surface. And that's zoomed in all the way. Pretty impressive though for a little $20 microscope camera, which is really just a macro camera. When I try this with tap water, completely different. It looks completely different. I, I don't get the oscillation of the bubbles like I'm seeing here. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.